Blake Jackson, co-owner of the Ugly Bug and Crazy Rainbow Lodge. Blake, we're in the upper reaches of the North Platte. What do we got going on today? Yeah, up here on the mile, we'll, uh, we got a little bit of everything. We got a good little trico hatch this morning. Nice. We should, uh, we should have a good day. Um, so up here, it's quality versus quantity, is it? What are we uh, targeting today? Primarily uh, rainbows, but we got some really good brown trout up here too. Um, obviously some carp. All right, so uh, nymphing to start? Yep, nymphing to start. Sounds good, man. And pretty run of the mill, fast water, noticeable take, soft water, softer take sort of thing. Okay. But don't hesitate to really pin them on the hook set. Okay. They, uh, a lot of them like to come airborne as soon as we touch them, right? So okay. they're gonna come up in the column and start jumping. Trout eating salmon eggs, you know? Yeah. They're all eating sucker eggs and chasing suckers. And when that's going on, we might see a two to 3,000 fish increase in population. Right. They're in the river system for a month and then they're out again. We get the same in the spring with rainbows leaving the reservoir to come up to spawn and the same in the fall with browns leaving the reservoir. But generally fish numbers will be between 800 and 1,200 fish a mile. Oh, so pretty high. Yeah, relatively high. <laughs> yep, yep. Oh, uh, come off. It's August and it's hopper season on the North Platte, and the trichos are just about to start. As per normal at this time of year, expect to nymph early until either the trico spinnerfall happens or the river starts to warm and midday winds start to blow. The fish will be looking up to eat hoppers later in the day. We're seeing success nymphing early. Oh, you are right, Blake. You know, at the beginning of this run, Blake said, really watch your indicator because in the faster water, it's gonna be a real violent, violent take. And then the slower water set on any, on any little tick. And that's what happened here is that, that indicator just moved ever so slightly, huh? Barely bounced, yep. And with three X, you can, oh, good fish. With three X, you can lean in on them. Wow, and I've got the drag cranked. <laughs> Good hot fish. Nice. Oh my gosh, what a gorgeous fish. Look at that. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Oh, he's fat. I can barely get my hand around him. <laughs> yeah, good shape. Not a bad way to start the trip here at Ugly Bug. Great fish. All right, let's get him back. So, so let me show you the fly that the fly rig that we have going on here. We've got a, a jig head pink worm here. The water is dirty, so that's why we've gone with something real, really bright. Then we've got a nice little red larval worm, really. That, uh, that that's what that fish ate. And then because we're in in Wyoming, we've got three fly rig. Then we've got a little caddis larva here on the on the end fly. So, but that fish ate the red. Good times. Is that a talkable point too for you, Blake, that you know, having having tail waters that you can fish all season is really, really beneficial versus free stones that tend to warm up through the summertime? Is that something that's that's relevant here or oh yeah, totally. Without our dams, we wouldn't have a trout fishery. Right. <laughs> way too warm, water way too low, yeah. I mean there's often I guess you know some negative aspects to to tail waters right and yeah. uh, I think a lot of people don't you know realize that you know a lot of these western rivers wouldn't wouldn't necessarily hold fish due to water temperature and that sort of thing they'd yeah. hold fish but it'd be chubs and yeah. carp not trout. Like I said, it's a quality it's a quality game versus a quantity game here on the Miracle Mile and we got a good one on. It's a big fish, big rainbow, and just crushed this fly. Push at you just a hair. Probably got one more kick in him here, I would guess. Oh, look at that. Good one. Nice. 
Yeah, you ate that caddis nymph. It's called a bird's nest, so it's like a kind of a fuzzy, woolly looking hare's ear with a little gold bead on it. But he uh, he tattooed it right out there in the middle of the current. Yeah, he did, and you're right. As soon as those big fish eat, they really do tend to run to the center of the river, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they know uh, big boulders and current are their friends for sure. All right, let's take a look. Great fish, hot fish. Yep. They are airborne, what fun. We're just at the pullout. You gotta love pullout fish, you know. Just when you think you're about done for the day, you get one more shot at the can. Another nice rainbow. Are you surprised we didn't see any browns today, Blake? I am surprised, yeah. We got a little higher ratio of browns up here. Browns have been real active today. Well, these guys are active and they're super fun. Come on up, buddy. There nice. you go. Nice fish. End of the day heroics. We've had a great day here up on the Miracle Mile. We're just about at the pullout along this chalk bluff. It's gorgeous, idyllic fly fishing scenario. And we got an eat. Oh, yeah. Yep, still does. You know, one of the things about fishing Here's, the, you are gonna have trouble with moss. We've had, you know, moss on our flies all day, but you know what, if you're cool about it and just, you know, swing it off or pick it off, you can get through it and get really qual quality fish. Yeah, and this, this time of year is when we, you know, see the majority of it, right? It, it dissipates again in September and we don't really have an issue in the But that's part, that's part spring, of the game. But that's part of it in the summer, yeah. Most Western rivers are gonna see some sediment and some moss. Yeah. All right, what a fish to end the day here at the Ugly Bug. This is awesome. So amazing. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Great fish, Mark. Yeah, yeah. You know, as we said this morning, it's quality versus quantity, right? And that's what it's all about. 